Hello and welcome back. Um, so, I am. I've been in this refinery world for a while now. We're up to 17 hours of just fiddling around in this um, refinery world. Just to recap, um, I don't understand fluids, so the only way I can figure out fluids is to simulate things. Which is a bit of a shame. Um, and uh, that means I have to actually build the whole setup. So, I went through and had a go at a rail-based refinery. The idea is there are trains with two locomotives, eight fluid wagons, then um, two more locomotives. So they basically fit into the same pattern as the rest of the base. The refinery gets fed at one end with water and crude, and then at the other end uh, you get out petroleum, light and heavy oil. They're in this order because the thing nearest the refinery, therefore having the least distance to travel, um, is the highest volume fluid. I've used pumps everywhere I can to link things, and there were some things in the builds where even introducing a single section of pipe but one of the eight cassettes would knock 5-10% um, off the overall production of that site. So this is the refinery. There are four pairs of refineries. Each refinery stack has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine refineries in it. With this particular way of building it, I couldn't get a tenth in. I have since learned a few things. So if you look here, the highest volume fluid for the refinery um, is the uh, petroleum. Okay, you can um, improve throughput by sticking a pump in. So instead of having it like this, you have a pump there. Now there's obviously not enough room for that. I had put the petroleum closest to the refinery because then you don't have this extra piece of pipe. However, um, let's just mock it up. Okay, so if instead we had done something like this. Okay, so that's bad. We've got two bits of pipe where there was one. However, we can now put a um, fluid pump there. And if we did that, that would keep this petroleum moving from refinery to refinery. I think if we did that, we could have probably maxed out for the petroleum output. And again, the petroleum output, we would have made the further of those. So that would have been on a single stub, that would have been on two. Bring in a pipe. Mm, yeah. Like that. So if we'd done that, I think, possibly, we could have got a few more refineries into these stacks improved the throughput. As it turns out, this refinery already produces enough material for a 5k base. So um, I think if I've done the sums wrong, right, I hope I'm not off by a factor of 10. If, if I need 10 of these for a 5k base, I'm going to cry. Um, I think this refinery produces enough material for a 5k base. So uh, although I could now rebuild this, having learned some things, I'm not going to bother. But maybe next time. Maybe next time. Okay, so that's the fluid refinery. There were all sorts of issues with timings for this, where um, production would dip as trains were pulling out and in. Uh, I had to do things with uh, cascading uh, tanks. All these output tanks have this funny arrangement of extra pipes with circuits. This load bounces across the, the tanks. It's absolutely necessary because all of these columns tend to run at slightly different rates because they have slightly different numbers of pipes joining them up, coming in and going out. Uh, they also fluctuate in rate, so you have to load balance across here so that you don't end up with one lagging 
blocking up the other seven. And similarly on the outputs, you can end up with one blocking, holding up the other seven. And these tend to turn into oscillations, and the oscillations build up, and what starts off as sort of a one or two percent lose becomes a five or ten percent loss. Um, yay for complex chaotic systems. Okay, the next build was the lube, and um, this was a bit of a paper exercise. I wanted to see how big you can build out a lube making factory. So this has both the in and the out station at the same end. You bring in heavy oil, take out lube. Now, the lube production here is frankly insane. Right, so the lube is producing uh, 659k of lube a minute. Right. Uh, to give you some idea, a 10k station, uh, a 10k base, if I've done the calculations correctly. Uh, needs, uh, I think, is it eight of these lube makers? I don't know, it's a small number, like single digits small. Uh, so this is enough, you know, this is getting on for being enough lube production for the um, 60k map. This is serious stuff. So in the real world, I'm not going to use this. Um, I'll have the same input here. Uh, but it will funnel down to a single stack of this, or maybe even a half stack. And I might even do this on the same site as I make uh, electric engines, because there's a, a volume increase. So you put in a, one unit of heavy. Uh, with prob mods, you get out 1.3 units of lube. So I think what I'm going to do is train the heavy to the electric engine site. It will then go into maybe this kind of build, but a single machine deep to turn the heavy into lube, and then that will get piped directly into the electric engine makers. As this is a stack of eight, we can go straight into a stack of eight engine makers um, and just feed them direct. Okay, so the next thing is the um, heavy to light cracking. This was an interesting one. Um, this was where I learned that trick with the pumps. So let's run over here. Um, because of how I've been building these things, uh, you can actually see my thought process laid out across the map. So let's start off way, way, way over here. Um, sorry, I've been doing all this with on my own and I've realized that viewers it's probably a lot of slow walking so I'll add some legs that's better all right so this was the original heavy oil design so water comes at the top heavy at the bottom we bring out the light oil and uh, there was a bit of backwards and forwards to get the, these all lined up um, so this kind of situation is bad because you've got a single kink. Uh, this situation is good because you've got a an even number of joins so you can put in a pump. There were places where I could if I'd sat down and spent a lot more time over it, perhaps have got these to line up better. Anyway, I ran this. Copy pasted it, put in all the creative mode things, ran it. It didn't work. Right, I could not get this to work. Um, I, between one and one and two machines was always dead here. I got within about 8% of productivity. That was it. Couldn't get the rest of it out. And the issue was, um, let's click on one of these. All right. So this takes in 6.5K of heavy, puts out 6.3, um, takes in 4.9 of water. So it's taking in a lot more heavy than water. And what was happening was, um, basically situations like this where you have the extra single segment of pipe but it was even happening on this through and through just couldn't get the volume of heavy oil down this stack so I went away and mocked up a few things and came up with this version where the water's brought in the heavy comes in on a series of pipes with a pump in not only did that make this work 
but this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 units. This, with the pumps in, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's got two more units. To support that, we needed to also, if you look at the max rate, it's uh, 6.5k heavy for 6.3k of light per machine. Right, so this run of pipes was backing up. That's fixed again by adding in a single pump. So every time you take things out of this machine, you then shove it through a pump, and then it gets pushed out. And then we always make sure to use pumps here. Put in the creative mode stuff for that, and it ran absolutely perfectly first time. That is seriously the first time I've ever had a it works first time fluid build. Well, right, it was the second time technically because I'd had the build that didn't work first time. All right, so. Here we are. Um, and this one, to make it work, I absolutely did need load balancing over the um, the emptying machines. Right. So I, they're overkill on the lube build, but here it was necessary to load balance across these tanks. Because uh, you get in situations like this where it's not quite, not quite there, not quite there, something isn't quite there, um, but we're really within tolerance it's all fine. Okay. So then the final build is the uh, light oil to petroleum. And this is another one where um, I basically used that previous build, slapped it down. It originally had one more machine than this stack has. So this has one, let's count it with the, okay. because me counting out numbers is kind of annoying. Uh, sorry, it originally had 16 chem plants. Um, that wouldn't work. There was no sensible way to shimmy these around so that this would be a single or a double um, unit. Uh, the load balancing plumbing uh, becomes an absolute nightmare if you cross these over by any more than this because you've got the undergrounds. So um, it is technically possible to squeeze these together by one more tile, but you end up having to loop the, the, the route for the balancing up and over. And that's just, it's sad. It's not very nice. Um, okay, so what do we have? We have, um, so here you can see this is really stretched out and that's fine, but this one that's crunched up, you can't do anything about. So there were a couple of places where we had these kind of kinks. There's a single piece there that we couldn't fit a um, pipe into. So again, I could have dropped that down one and then, well, I would have had to have dropped it down two and it, yeah, it just wasn't gonna work. So the solution was to lose one, one chem plant. But again, by dropping out the single chem plant, um, this runs at full speed. So by full speed, what I mean is I use max rate calculator to calculate the speed it should run at. Then I let it run for five or 10 minutes and check those figures that match. They do. So those figures match for every single build, except for the refinery where I'm getting about a 2% loss, which I reckon is within acceptable margins. Um, each of these units is built to internal ratio. I think this is really worth stressing. So each of these guys produces a well-balanced maximum size stack build. Um, fills up trains. I have approximated it to a train every, um, every minute. So there aren't trains leaving or arriving wildly outside one minute period. Um, but beyond that, that's it. So I've got no guarantee that any particular number of cracking sites or lube production or anything else is going to correspond to one refinery. And this is really the philosophy throughout my build. Um, I'm just building well ratioed modules without really any thought for the load balancing between them. So I will go off later and put down one of this build and two of that and five of that 
until I have sufficient capacity, i.e. slightly more than I need. Um, and then I'm going to wire these up to circuit conditions so that um, this is turned off when these tanks are overflowed. Okay, so basically if the capacity on all of this is 25 per tank, don't know why that one's empty, anyway, if the capacity on this is 25 per tank, then it's backed up. At that point, I would cut power to these modules. Okay, I could do, in this particular build, each of these is an isolated electricity network um, with a, a cable at bridges. Um, so I, I could potentially turn off and on each stack as the, this hits 25, but that seems, seems overly complicated. Um, so the idea is that when I'm over capacity for any particular site, that site will be off some of the time. And then there's possibly things I can do that is in terms of shoving down the green red cables across the entire uh, train network backbone uh, to get a feel for um, to get a feel for just how much uh, things are on and off. So that's it. Um, this was incredibly tedious, as you can see by the 27 hours, sorry, the 17 hours up on that clock. Uh, it would not have made for good viewing, and I haven't really got into the habit of live streaming yet. So uh, that was it. However, the next e next episode will be back in the really real game world, where I will be taking these builds, and I will be putting them into an actual rail network. Um, and uh, seeing if we can hook it up to actual production and getting to the point where we are making circuits, which is quite exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, just as a schematic, uh, let's grab a pipe. Okay, so um, we have a, we have a, a high volume backbone so far that looks something like this. Um, Let's see if I can Okay. Okay. How do you do this? Okay, so we have plastic here. That is next door to red circuits. So let's get hold of a Then red circuit is next to blue circuits because blue circuits is the thing which eats the most red circuits of all. Then that is next to green. And then green is next to copper because that green is the main consumer of copper. Okay, so This is where I can't show it. Maybe I can show it with barrels. Um, okay, so uh, plastic is the primary consumer of petroleum. And it turns out that after you've done your productivity boosting, the primary producer of petroleum isn't actually refining. It is the light oil cracking. So, so it is the light oil cracking that is the, where are we? Yep, light oil cracking that's going to go there. Um, then uh, the biggest volume thing to go into the light oil cracking is the light oil. That comes from refining. So let's get a crude barrel to represent refining. Okay, and then it's that then heavy oil cracking produces some 
light oil. So uh, this is heavy to light. So I think that's how I'm going to extend that bus outwards. Um, now, there are other things that use plastics. Uh, so uh, we have a second bus going up this way. Um, so we do iron, then the, we, next is steel. Okay, and then it's kind of six and two threes. So what I'm probably gonna do is there's a couple of high iron products. Um, there are um, gun turrets and electric mining drills. Okay, so. Gun turrets made a bit of a mess of that. Anyway, you get the idea. And electric mining drills. Okay. Probably here, this will be low density structures because this needs um, to have the um, steel and the plastic. And it also uses copper, so it's it's all in all quite a, a heavy user. Um, right, where is yeah low density? So low density goes there. Um, then um, there's actually a bridge along there to allow trains to quickly get from iron plate to green. That's probably the route which things going to low density would go to, but I'm also going to put in a, a box there, so the whole thing becomes a square shape. So um, that goes on up. That's our. This is going to be things to do with fluids. So I might do sulfuric acid up there, although you don't get through very much. So again, I might, might make that on site with the blue circuits. Um, then there is the solid fuel for the rockets to make, which is actually quite a heavy user of, um, well, probably heavy oil in this case. So I think the next thing up here might be rocket fuel. Um, where are we? There. Can't do nuclear powered rockets. Great. Uh, and then that's basically it for all the things which use ridiculous volumes of material. So these are all 282 trains. This whole subnet is 282 trains. Uh, so then this is the point where, I don't know how I will arrange it, but this is where um, we'll be doing all the other builds, probably on, uh, 141 trains, uh, some kind of shrunk down version, uh, because there's no point having eight carriages of red science, for example. That's ridiculous. So these are probably going to be uh, 141 or maybe 24 trains. If they're 24 trains, I can bring in a 282 uh, by setting up two train stations. So it unloads the first four carriages and then the second four carriages. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do. And then this will be the thing, you know which goes off and uh, produces the six science packs, the uh, remaining item. Um, so the other sort of intermediate volume thing we've got are the speed modules. And I'm in two minds at the moment about whether to put the speed modules on the high volume bus, but I don't think I'm going to. I think speed modules will end up being the very first item on the low volume bus here. Um, anyway, that's basically it. So uh, the less stuff a site uses, the further to the end of this it's going to be. 
the more stuff it uses, the closer to here it's going to be. Um, and then uh, somewhere along here, we will have labs. And that will be where all the things go and never come back from. So lots of full trains going, lots of empty trains coming back. Yeah. So that's it, really. That is my plan. Um, I hope you like the schematic. Uh, anyway, next thing is I'm going to grab blueprints of all these modules with their stations, but without the extra bits of uh, plumbing. Uh, and then we will go back to the main site and we will start to lay down these modules here uh, with these builds in them and a single replicate of each one. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed my bit of uh, collage and the brief tour around the bits. Um, see you again soon and hope you're having a nice time watching these vids. Bye!